Hi everyone, great to have you here. So if you've been following me, you've probably noticed that I've been posting about NFTs a lot on my social media. I even started a Twitter posting only NFT related content. And if you've been following my YouTube channel, you know that this is strictly for gaming and streaming. Fuck. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fuck. Hey, yeah. But I'm going to pivot a little bit here and start telling you guys about NFTs because so many people have been asking me, what the F is an NFT? So 2021 was the year when NFT broke into mainstream media and conversations. And I think it's become kind of like a buzzword, but there's still a lot of confusion around what it is and how do they exist and why can't you just right click save? So I'm hoping that the upcoming videos that I'll be posting will help answer some of these questions along with some tips that I've picked up along the way. So my journey into crypto started almost five years ago when a friend introduced me to cryptocurrencies and I created my first wallet and bought my first coins. Then around half a year ago, I was stuck in quarantine for 21 days coming back from the States and a friend started telling me about NFTs. And during that time was when Mark Zuckerberg delivered his keynote and announced that Facebook was changing his name to Meta. And my immediate thought was, whoa, it's happening. Like we won't be able to hide from this alternate virtual reality anymore. And I've always imagined that the metaverse will be playing a big part in our lives in the future since I'm a gamer and VR has really shown me that in addition to gaming, how social interaction can be really different from what we're used to. So besides being really excited, I couldn't help but think that Hey, I'm living in this time where I'm witnessing this development of new technologies that will really fundamentally change the way that we interact and the way that we exchange money and create ownership. And that if I started learning and diving into this space right now, maybe I can take a part in this great shift. Instead of sitting on the sidelines and just watching it happen, maybe I can have a seat at the table. So there I am in quarantine with all the time in the world and I really really dived in. And trust me, six months ago, I was sitting exactly where you are. I was skeptical, I was super confused. And fast forward to now, I own more than 100 NFTs. So what is an NFT? To begin, I think we have to examine human behavior. We just love collecting random stuff, whether it's sneakers, handbags, Pokemon cards, stamps, stuffed animals. <laughs> if you've ever collected or valued something and cared that you own it, congratulations. I think you're well on your way to understanding what NFTs are. But you may say to me, all right, so these are physical items that we hold. Uh, so I would understand why anyone would collect them, but why the hell would someone pay $500,000 for a JPEG of an ape? Let's talk about it. NFT, non-fungible token. So to define what non-fungible is, let's define something that is fungible. So something that's fungible would be money. If you have a $10 bill and I have a $10 bill, we can exchange those bills and everyone would feel completely fine with that transaction because the value is still $10. Even though the pieces of papers that were exchanged were different, the value exchange were the same. So something that's non-fungible. Non-fungible is each is unique. You can't just simply exchange one for another. So even if the things were identical, they have different value. So for example, I have an iPhone 13 and you have an iPhone 13. And although they look exactly the same and have the same hardware, we can't just exchange them because the phone has my... Blah, 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 blah. We can't just exchange them because my phone has my personal things in it. My photos, my memories, my notes. So although our phones look exactly the same, I can't exchange my one for yours because the value of the two phones are different to me. So an NFT can apply to digital assets that are unique and have value. They can be anything that's digital. So it doesn't just have to be a photo or a drawing. It can be a music clip, a video, a document, or even a tweet. So the big problem with digital items is that for a long time, let's say if you have a JPEG and you say, hey, this JPEG is worth a lot. 
I could just right click save that and now I have a pixel perfect representation of that digital item and there's no difference. And the JPEGs would be exactly the same so why would I ever pay money for a particular one when I can just right click save? Now what the blockchain has done, this JPEG is the one and only true version of it because that JPEG will contain a unique identification code and metadata, which is stored on the blockchain. Very quickly define what a blockchain is, it's complicated. Um, but to define it simply, the blockchain is a decentralized, distributed, and public ledger that records transactions. The info stored on the blockchain anyone can see, but it can never be tempered with. So as long as you have that one JPEG in your wallet, you are the owner. So now you know how an NFT is non-fungible, but to understand why you would want to buy an NFT in the first place and the value it holds, we need to understand why things have value at all. So when it comes to NFTs, we talk about how much they're worth and how much profit we're making from trading them and how they can generate wealth. But there are so many reasons why people buy an asset, physical or digital, that isn't really about money at all. Sometimes it's part of your identity or your self-image. So you may buy a designer handbag or get a supercar or spend a lot of money on a diamond ring or get a specific Instagram handle simply because those things say something about who you are and the image that you would like to project to the world. And sometimes you buy something because it's scarce. Something that's perceived as being rare or scarce or one of a kind may seem more valuable to you. And another reason is maybe because you really want to be a part of a community. We really love belonging to things and being a part of something. And sometimes an NFT is a membership pass or access to a community that you just really want to be a part of. So personally, this is a big reason why I sometimes get really emotionally attached to my NFTs. Because I've made friends in the community and I believe in what the project is trying to achieve. So for instance, an NFT project that I've invested in called BFF is about helping women and non-binary people navigate in crypto and Web3. And this NFT collection is literally 10,000 identical images of a bracelet. And the price has doubled since I bought in, but I find a great sense of belonging in this community. And when the NFT as a whole is so male-centric, it means a lot to me to belong in a community that's made for women by women. So it's the access to this community that made me buy and hold this NFT. And finally, you may just like the NFT and that's good enough. There are a lot of things that I buy because I just like them. I can't tell you how many JPEGs I own simply because I just love the art. And sometimes things are valuable just because you value it. NFTs are opening up a universe of possibilities given to us by the blockchain for artists, creators and technicians to build something. And not only can artists sell their work for the first time, but now they can get royalties for every sale of their art in the future. So in real life, if an artist sells something once, it could trade hands a hundred more times and the artist may never know and they'll never see a dime. But put something on the blockchain, the artist or creator or musician could get royalties for decades, which is absolutely game-changing for people in the creative industries. So I hope that after watching this, you understand a bit more about NFTs or at least you understand my enthusiasm for this space. A lot of people are saying a lot of different things about the space. We can't always know what's going to happen next, but just know that no matter what you hear, you have to do your own research. Do not invest more than you can lose. I'm not here to encourage you to invest in crypto or buy NFTs, but if you'd like to start, I hope I'm here for you so you don't take too many wrong steps. And it's so early. It's really the wild, wild west out there. There's so many scammers. So I want you to be really careful out there. So coming up, I'll have more videos explaining how to pick the right projects and how to stay safe in the space. I'll go over the lingo used in the space and some basics like how to create a wallet. So subscribe. And next time, when someone condescendingly comes up to you and goes, why would anyone spend thousands of dollars on a dumb JPEG? You'll let them know what's up.